She went on Twitter cussing out Diddy and then deleted it because Diddy wanna um, throw Dwayne um, up. The day of the raid. I got a lot of notifications. I got a lot of ads. I got a lot of mentions. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Due to her alarming charges against some of the biggest names in music, singer-songwriter Jaguar Wright has been in the news recently. She has claimed that Talib Kweli, Common, Diddy, Jay-Z, and other celebrities have been taken advantage of and have behaved inappropriately. After going on the rampage against Diddy, rapper 50 Cent is reportedly threatening to stay away from him, claiming he has plans to harm her in some way in order to land the next job. It's the next beast, it's the next the mace, it's the next the job. It's the next, look, Puppy might be the destination for anybody going nowhere. Nobody's 50 Cent regularly poked fun of the singer on social media when federal agents raided the singer's homes in Miami and Los Angeles and discovered that Diddy Communications had filed several lawsuits. Nevertheless, the rappers have been embroiled in a decades-long spat involving scathing autobiographies, rival vodka brands, and discordant records. As of late, Uncle Fifth has decided to publicly back Jaguar Wright, who has been vocal in her disdain of Diddy. The G-Unit mastermind has stated multiple times that he thinks Diddy is dangerous. 50 Cent asserted on the 2006 diss track song The Bomb that Diddy knew who shot the notorious Big, a rapper who was shot and killed in a drive-by in 1997 at the age of just 24. Diddy was with the late rapper the night of the shooting, although he was reportedly in a different automobile. Since then, Fifth has charged that the troublesome music mogul is still profiting from Biggie's notoriety by releasing posthumous albums and incorporating the late rapper's song samples into his own works. Biggie hired musicians to work on Diddy's Bad Boy recordings. Furthermore, 50 Cent kept hinting repeatedly, until December 2023, that Puffy was associated with Tupac Shekhar's 1997M. It is only right, therefore, that he try to warn Jaguar about the possible danger Diddy poses to her and her family. The authorities have not charged Diddy with a crime in relation to Tupac. In a 2016 interview, the rapper went on to describe the insinuations as ridiculous. In an interview from 2018, Fifth brought up the incident where the recording mogul urged 50 Cent to go shopping. According to Puffy, 50 Cent asked for anything because he desired new clothes. Fifth has also talked about Diddy's seality few times. 50 added that he stays away from Diddy's parties because he would embrace you from the front and behind at the same time. In 2015, the rapper made fun of rival vodka companies by continuously tweeting with the hashtag hash no puffy juice, which was a parody of Diddy's Sea Rock Company. In December of last year, 50 Cent stated that the documentary he and his production company, G-Unit Film and Television, made was going to help victims of SEL abuse. The allegations of SEL abuse against Diddy would be the main focus of the documentary. After the rapper-turned-film producer shared an image on Instagram that appeared to be a documentary poster, search traffic for the term Diddy to its skyrocketed. This isn't a poster for a recognized event. The poster's developer, Code Opto, disclosed to Forbes, Over the years, 50-year-old Jaguar Wright has been outspoken in his condemnation of Diddy, accusing the Grammy winner of multiple transgressions. In a prior interview, Jaguar seemed to indicate that Diddy was involved in multiple deaths. She said that five persons formed Uptown Records in an interview with Real Life Productions. The workers with the most hours were Al B. Sure, Kim Porter, Ander Harrell, Puffy and Heavy D., she had been there from the beginning. She was Andrew's personal assistant at work. Kim is no longer a member of our organization. Heavy dues are no longer owed to us. It's the end for Andrew Hurl. The only two that are left are Puffy and Al, and even Al was close to passing away. However, you know what they have in common, contentious singer went on. Who are the survivors of Uptown Records? They were all writing memoirs. Has Puffy previously experienced a coma? Has anything changed about him? He must be the luckiest MF ever, since it appears like everyone who has ever worked at Uptown Records has moved on except for him. Wright, on the other side, speculated that Diddy was responsible for other deaths and claimed that Cassie's separation was the outcome of their failed relationship. Cassandra claimed to be getting a $500,000 monthly paycheck from Diddy before he let her go. What would make you give up? What in the world is going on? Is $250,000 not enough? Is $250,000 insufficient? 
How in the world is that cooperation going? Other traders said that security guards were following and observing Diddy. Numerous lawsuits have been filed against the artist since November 2023. Singer Cassandra Ventura, better known as Cassie, filed the first lawsuit. In it, she claimed that Diddy had been her boyfriend in 2018 and had physically abused her for years prior to their breakup. They struck a compromise for an undisclosed amount later that month, but according to Diddy's lawyer, the money wasn't an admission of guilt. In November, plaintiff Joey Dickerson Neal filed a lawsuit against the rapper, alleging that in 1991, he drugged and harassed her. Neal reiterated that he had recorded the incident on camera. Furthermore, in November, a plaintiff requesting anonymity sued singer-songwriter and hit producer Aaron Hall, alleging that she was with Hall and a friend in 1990 or 1991. In December, Puffy was sued by another plaintiff, who wishes to remain anonymous. She said that in 2003 Puffy, who was only 17 years old at the time, had joined the plaintiff's group. Music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones then filed a lawsuit against his company in February of this year, alleging that Diddy's colleagues had made uninvited SEL advances and that the rapper had organized S-train parties. As expected, the rapper has vehemently denied all of the charges made against him in the multiple lawsuits that have been filed against him. His lawyer Aaron Dyer claimed in a statement that federal agents had used excessive force and confrontational behavior in their most recent operations. Dyer criticized the raids for inciting people to rally in support of the singer, but emphasized that the rapper was not being detained by police officials. Diddy has faced several challenges in his three-decade career including felony firearm possession, R allegations and SEL assault. He has also won numerous awards. After challenging the charges, his attorneys have mostly dismissed them. One of the promoters of the 1992 celebrity basketball competition in Harlem, New York, that left multiple people injured was K. Diddy. There were no charges made against him. The rapper and Jennifer Lopez, according to MTV, were supposedly hauled to a prison in New York City after a gunshot at a nearby club in December 1999. Both the illegal possession of a firearm and the theft of merchandise led to the two people being placed under arrest. At the time J. Lo had been held by the police for 14 hours at a Midtown police station, according to the Daily News, where he was restrained by a bench. Despite the suspicion that Diddy was in possession of an illegal firearm, he was ultimately found not guilty. Then, according to Variety, Diddy was accused of attacking a UCLA football coach in 2015. There are rumors that the rapper used a kettlebell to strike the assistant coach. He was charged of assault with a dangerous weapon when he was incarcerated, but in the end the accusations were dropped. The Hollywood Reporter claims that the entrepreneur was sued in 2017 by his former cook, Cindy Ruda. Allegations of SEL harassment, retaliation, slander, failure to pay overtime, and deliberate infliction of emotional distress were included in the case. Local media reports state that the case was settled in February 2019 for an undisclosed amount. After Cassie revealed her costume on Instagram, singer Aubrey O'Day, who was formerly a member of Puffy's prodigy group Danity Kane, remarked, I've been trying to tell y'all for years. The complainant said that Diddy frequently beat her so severely and with such violent outbursts that she was compelled to hide away in motels for weeks at a time in order to recover alone. Cassie claims to have received a diagnosis of memory loss and she thinks Diddy kept her compliant with drugs and alcohol, leading to problems with substance abuse. Cassie claimed that if Diddy had realized she had an affair with the rapper following her split from Puffy, he could have caused damage to Kid Cutie's vehicle. This offers another evidence that Jaguar Wright is not secure. Diddy is alleged to have forced Cassie to receive implants in 2009, despite warnings that it would be risky to remove them too soon. Because of their size, Diddy allegedly told renowned surgeon Dr. Frank Ryan to have the implants taken out the next day. Diddy, however, informed the Daily Mail that they must come out, make the necessary calls to the people who must appear. Diddy, though, has a history of being connected to violent crimes. The rapper and record executive first appeared on the hip-hop scene in the mid-1990s at the height of the intense rivalry between East Coast and West Coast artists. The last peak of this rivalry was reached with the releases of M by Tupac Shakur in 1996 and M by Notorious Big six months later. According to Gene Deal, Diddy's security at the time, Biggie's closest friend Puffy, who was signed to Diddy's Bad Boy Entertainment record label, might have perished in the drive-by shooting that claimed Biggie's life. 
I went now, knowing there would be a gunshot death that evening. I took every precaution to make sure it wasn't Puff, but it wasn't. Instead, those in charge of securing Big neglected to take the necessary safety measures to keep it from becoming Big. And even though it went against my moral convictions, it nevertheless affected me. Deal said to the dialogue heart that in 1999, Diddy acted like a mafioso and struck then Interscope Records CEO Steve Stout with a chair when he didn't get his way. Believing it was blasphemous, the now-troubled rapper attempted to have a portion from a NAS video, Hate Me Now, where he featured beside two dudes hanging on a cross, removed. However, after Diddy pulled guilty to the lesser harassment charge, the prosecutors withdrew the initial assault case. Diddy also had to control his temper for the day. As the Post said at the time, there was no greater violation than if communications had simply yelled at Stout on the street. The Post, 1999, said that communications' $500,000 contribution to Stout lubricated the wheels of friendship. Furthermore, in 1999, Detroit talk show host Rogelio Mills said that he was attacked by Diddy and his entourage when he inquired about allegations that the mogul was the cause of Biggie's death. When his attorney questioned Diddy about his deposition, Diddy replied, I just remember ending the interview. The jury found the rapper not guilty, and the decision was upheld on appeal. Years later, according to a 2004 New York Magazine profile, designer Kimora Lee Simmons, who was born with baby fat, allegedly told Diddy something, and he threatened to beat her. Simmons asserted, I was expecting. According to the story, Puffy eventually bowed down to apologize to Simmons in front of the crowd. Furthermore, Cassie revealed that following a fight between the two at a Hollywood bar in 2012, Diddy had threatened to blow up Kid Cutie's car. As per Cassie's account, Combs told her at the February 2022 Paris Fashion Week that he planned to blow up Kid Cutie's car, but he wanted to make sure the rapper was at home with his friends. That's when Kid Cutie's car blew up in his driveway, according to the lawsuit. A Kid Cutie spokesman told the New York Times last week that everything was real, at Clive Davis's 2021 pre-Grammy luncheon, Diddy persisted in his criticism of the Recording Academy for its failure to value and acknowledge the rap and R&B categories. Mays, a former Bad Boy member, responded on Instagram claiming that your prior business practices were terribly unfair to the musicians that helped you win the Icon Award on the storied Bad Boy label and that you had purposefully continued to starve them. As such, Diddy is a dangerous man who has put many people's lives in risk, including Jaguar rights. Whether or if the 50 cent warning works is what really counts. We'll learn the truth eventually. Thus, our time for today is up. I appreciate you watching, and I'll speak with you later.